Divine Source, Great Spirit, we're so grateful to be called here today by your love and your grace. We're here to serve the highest good, to have you speak through us, to have you share your wisdom, your glory, your grace with all those you would call here. And so it is. Welcome to Talking Spirit. My name is Yuta, and I'm back with my lovely friend, Elizabeth. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, welcome. Seems like today Spirit is delivering very directly through both of us. <laughs> we had a, a little joining before hitting the record button, and it just felt like lots of good energy coming through today. <laughs> as always, but it just feels a little more lively. And the theme that we'd like to talk about today, or that Spirit would like to talk about through us, is around integrity and the, I think, just the different ways that we can run into issues on the spiritual path with really being in our integrity with the Spirit and perhaps even being clear on exactly what it means in certain situations to fully stay and be in integrity. So in a way, this talk is also about compromise. And yeah, when I had a check-in with Spirit this morning, just around this idea of integrity, because Elizabeth came through with that word, the way it came through for me was that there have been times for me where, and I've seen it in many others too, where there, there's obviously a beautiful teaching in many spiritual traditions and also, you know, in sort of the, the bigger one that's kind of been there for me, which is A Course in Miracles, which is this openness. In A Course in Miracles, openness is talked about as, you know, one of the sort of characteristics of what it calls the teachers of God, which is all of us. And openness is obviously beautiful. <laughs> we want to be open to the spirit all the time. And there's a there's a tricky thing that sometimes happens, and I've seen it with myself and others, where openness actually gets used by the ego or, you know, the unconscious part of our mind and we end up being too open or open in the wrong direction and you know sort of this kind of just going with the flow vibe but not in a, in a very spiritual way and it actually leads to really deep compromise and lots of unhappiness and in the end also leads to feeling disconnected not only from other people but also from the spirit so yeah, you know, we, like Elizabeth likes to say, we come unscripted. So this is sort of the direction that Spirit took it with me. And I'm excited to hear what uh, comes to mind for Elizabeth around the whole thing. Yeah, well, I I have the idea of the word being one indicative of wholeness. And so we're really, when we're talking about our spiritual path, we're talking about coming back into the awareness of our wholeness, our perfection, truth, capital T, coming back into the awareness that we are connected to everyone and everything. And so I like when these words pop in, you know, spirit plays with me with words and meaning and numbers and I just find it helpful to, yeah, chew over a word like that, because as you say, there's there's a lot of nuance as we go on our path, potentially, that the spirit needs to take us through experiencing. And so, yeah, if we're looking to be back in our awareness of being unified with everything, that's a pretty high place you might say, in the mind. That's a very deep teaching. 
And for most of us that have been deeply invested in the world, it's going to be a journey for many of us and most of us, I'd say, to be brought into that place of experience of that inner unification. And so I've had the spirit throughout my whole journey play with ideas like this in my mind and show me, practically speaking, in my journey, where am I standing? Where am I holding my mind relative to these concepts? And so, you know, in the beginning, it might have been that I was really out of integrity by sitting and thinking about myself all day long. That may have been me being massively out of integrity. And then as I, you know, went through life, it might have been about really seeing the nuance of how am I feeling? Am I just sort of like, yeah, it doesn't matter or no, underneath all of this stuff in my mind is a rage around some particular issue or concept or experience I seem to be having. So, you know, integrity is like, it's a pretty broad topic. And it's kind of one of those things that is good to think about, meditate on with the spirit. But it's one of those things that's really like an inner journey. So it's it's kind of hard in this way to talk about it. But yeah, you and I were getting a message actually about these recordings. You know, a very specific thing for us. You know, we set a time. We're totally feeling available to the spirit. We now that Yuta's getting her feet in her new location under her. You know, it was like okay, back to recording. And we set a time and we feel committed to it. But in the moment, we're both kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm available with a little bit of a window. Well, the message today came in that that's actually not an integrity for us. What's in integrity for us is to stick to a specific time, to honor the fact that when we sit down and show up, that there's a whole host of spiritual support that's showing up with us. So we're not just making an appointment for ourselves to do this as you and Elizabeth, we're showing up for the whole universe. And we got that message. You know, it sounds kind of grand, but it's actually what's going on. Like spirit gave us a time to work with. And so we need to be ready, dressed, and pressed to show up and hit the record button and be a channel. So, you know, that's like practically what it looked like today for us. It can look any number of ways. I might be making my bed in the morning. It might be returning a phone call that I really don't want to return. So it's, again, it's pretty big, broad topic. And we learn about the meaning of it for us as we go through it. But it all comes back to serving the divine. You know, if we want to be in real integrity and we want to be moving in the direction of our wholeness, it all has to be putting the spirit in front of everything we're doing. So not putting the job first and then saying, how do I behave in integrity at my job? Uh Uh-uh. As you said, we get kind of can get things sort of backwards in this world if we don't understand what the purpose is for all of it. The purpose for all of it is to serve the great awakening. And that means putting spirit first, ourselves second, and then being shown what we need to be shown in every moment. So that's what shows up here. Yeah, thank you. While you're talking, I was just some stuff flashing through my mind um, around jobs, actually. And, you know, there's been there's been several moments over the last few years where I found myself in this kind of panic around how do I make money? (laughs) And, you know, Obviously, in the panic, I'm going online and searching for jobs, you know, remote jobs or any any sort of thing like that. And the whole time just feels absolutely horrible doing it. So obviously, a clear indicator that uh, what I'm doing is not what I'm meant to be doing. That's, that is not, it's not coming from a place of prayer. 
And many times over the last couple of years, when I've had those thoughts of, oh, maybe it's time to get a job or maybe it's time that I have some kind of steady income that comes in. It's always been, no, you know, when I do let myself go into prayer and really line up with the spirit and see what it really is that is given for me, it's always been a no. And that brought up a whole wave of beliefs around, you know, well, and how is it going to work? And how am I supposed to trust that I'm going to be taken care of? And just having to really sit with the fears that come up around, you know, where this idea, this, this idea of where is the money going to come from? And it wasn't actually guided for me to get a job until there was, it's like, it's almost like I needed, there needed to be like a bigger reason for me <laughs> like you know I I went back to Germany my home country and um, I worked actually in a small bakery there for a few months last year and that was meant to happen like spirit had me do it and it felt simple felt easy and it didn't really feel like it was coming from like I wasn't in a place of panic it was more like, oh, this is actually a helpful thing right now because it'll help this and it'll help that. And, you know, it'll be supportive for this and that. And so I think, you know, it was just kind of running through my head because, first of all, money is a really sticky topic and there's so much fear that can come up around it. So, you know, having to really approach that area of my mind with full integrity and not compromise has been really awesome in hindsight in the moment not always <laughs> the best experience because you know all the fear would come up around how things were going to really work out but you know I'm here so it did work out and it actually worked out much better than it would have, I think, if I had really gone against the guidance in all of those moments where, you know, I I actually wasn't guided to work and be sort of, you know, in a more stable income situation. Things Things have just worked out much better than I could have actually planned it. And, you know, that is part of, yeah, stepping into this integrity with the spirit that, we're not going to do things from fear anymore because we're just going to get more fear. We'll do things really when they're given by the one that guides us in this life because we don't have the big picture and we hardly ever know what the right thing to do is. And so having that really, really strong connection with the spirit throughout, you know, those times specifically with jobs. So, so helpful. And yeah, and, and you know, once, once the guidance was felt, really not to compromise in those moments and try to go against it. And, you know, when the fears come up around, well, how am I going to make money? I guess I, I probably should get a job even though I was told not to you know like there's that whole thing that can happen in my mind and I'm sure happens for other people as well where you kind of feel the guidance and aren't sure how it's going to work out and then you know the sort of temptation to just do the other thing that you know you're really not meant to be doing <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what was running through my mind. Yeah, I was not expecting any of <laughs> any of the job work stuff to be part of the conversation. Me neither. You know, <laughs> at all, at all, at all. And um, yeah, there are so many places where I compromised my integrity, you know, by being in a job, first of all, being in a specific job or going against guidance, you know, um, and... You know, it's like if I really, really look honestly at myself and my mind back to my childhood, 
I knew I was here to serve this awakening. And because I seem to have used reflections of other seeming people um, that seem to operate and think differently and seem to have been following maybe the world's way more than my way of really hearing guidance. You know, I, yeah, I just put myself to sleep over and over again. And those times where I was compromising and going against that inner guide, they were so painful. You know, it just, it's kind of like there's no worse pain because the divine is there calling, right? It's like 24-7 you have to be saying, not going to pick up, not going to pick up, don't hear it. Nope, no, not, the call's not happening, the phone's not ringing. <laughs> you know, it takes so much energy to deny our inner call. And for me, that's actually a call that wasn't like a still small call. It was really loud. And that's not me being special. That's really because this is the time that we are in. You know, this is the time that is absolutely vital for us all to answer the call. And I was, yeah, just having the last few days, a, a couple of messages that people have seemed to say to me throughout the years floating around that really come back to this conversation of integrity. And I've had people that I've worked with at times say, I wish I could do what you do. I wish I felt my connection the way you do. I wish I received messages the way you do. And yeah, it seems like I've had eons of this kind of skill set. And yet I have been put through my paces my whole life. So this idea that often people have when you come out of the world or you're being called out of the world and you start to answer it, often people want the gumball. They want the gifts of the spirit before putting the spirit first and foremost so that it can safely direct you as to how to use those gifts. You know, I shared a while back and when I did a, a training as a Peruvian shamanism training, spirit was regularly showing me people that were there to get and to have power and to have gifts and abilities. And it wasn't as a judgment. It was just as a cautionary tale. You know, the spirit is quite, quite potent, all powerful, right? And so if we are made of the divine, then we have the possibility to activate, right, a lot of power. And as you said somewhere in the beginning, if we don't know how or why we're being given these kinds of gifts and abilities, we're likely to use them for the wrong things. I just watched with a friend, um, I think it's 1984, as a Wonder Woman that was uh, last few years. You yeah. and I watched when we were together. And, um, you know, it shows Diana as a little girl basically cheating to win a race. And her mother or her teacher, whoever it is, actually yanks her before she wins. <clears throat> and it's basically, you know, the story of like, someday you're going to really have to understand this integrity thing. You know, you're going to be challenged to use these gifts of the spirit in the right way. And so it's that kind of a story of the world's way of wanting power and wanting one wish that they think will make them happy, right? Everybody gets this one wish in this in this movie and it causes total chaos, absolute destruction and chaos. And so, you know, we have to be tempered uh, to be able to hold more light and to then know how it's meant to be used. You know, we often talk about, you know, if spirit had shown me X, Y, or Z a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, right? My head would have been all screwed up. And so we have to be taken on a journey that allows the spirit to show us how to safely walk the razor's edge, not just in terms of the weirdness in our minds, but 
also the power that we're going to be given to serve others. So this integrity issue, you know, it can sort of seem kind of small and simple at times, and then it can get really big. Like you've got to be in your right mind. And if you want to wake up, then you've got to be in a place where you absolutely know everything about yourself. I was having the Buddha and the Bodhi tree show up this morning. He was sitting there on the precipice of enlightenment, having to face the demons, the seductresses, the dysentery, the starvation. You know, he had to be in complete and total alignment with the light within to withstand that final test. So it's like we're going from the really little, like, wake up, you know, what are the integrity issues to the big, big wake up, <laughs> you know, the big Shazam. So, yeah, that's just what's coming through now. Yeah, as you're talking, um, this this sort of documentary movie that I watched a month ago or something is coming back to my mind, and it's it's basically a story of this very disturbed young man just pretty much all of his life very disruptive and um, kind of prone to addiction in any way possible just you know going head first into life and just really causing a lot of trouble for himself and for others too and he ends up finding himself at rehab and you know he's learning all this stuff there that's really helping his mind and, you know, he's getting better. And then he kind of finds himself in this place of feeling like all the stuff he's learned, he is meant to share with other people. And there's there's this funny thing that seems to keep like playing out in this world where there's a like you said something about kind of upside down or, you know, things are kind of going a little backwards sometimes in the mind. And, you know, with this guy, he ends up turning, you know, he ends up, he's like a multimillionaire with this business he has of helping people get better in, you know, in the ways that he's gotten better. And there's a huge, huge focus on money. And, you know, there's a huge focus on being rich and, you know, having a, the Ferrari or whatever crazy, crazy car and, you know, just big house, all of the stuff, right? looks really, really good on the outside. And when I watch these kind of things, it's just, you know, it puts me in this meditation of like, what's really happening here? And, you know, the whole time as I'm watching it just feels like something is is a little backwards like of course he's teaching you know this this person is teaching you know and helping people to get better and like it sounds really good on the surface what he's talking about and you know talking about healing and actually going through inner healing and yet there is there's something that's kind of backward about it and doesn't feel to me like there's a true integrity in the way things like in the order of how things happen because you know as I'm looking at my own life and you know we've talked about this off uh off recording that you know there's there's gifts that the spirit has given me and you and obviously so many others as well and you know, we know that we can share these gifts with people and we want to share these gifts with people. And, you know, there's there's always these kind of options, I guess, for going into, you know, making a business out of these gifts. And for me, that's never felt really appropriate. Um, I did hear that spirit wants me to have a business, but it's a very different, um, it feels different to me where, you know, where the starting point is, um, because I don't want to have a business actually. <laughs> I'm not like, you know, sitting around thinking like, oh yeah, I should have a business <laughs> because, you know, I'm so good at what I do. 
Um, but I feel internally that spirit wants me to step more and more, you know, continuously step more and more into my function. And I guess it'll have, you know, sort of the term of business associated with it. But yeah, I don't know. It's a little, it's like, it's like what you said, like there's something that happens in the mind where things get turned upside down and like, we don't wait for the guidance first for something. It's like the mind gets into this place where it thinks of great ideas and then goes for them. And maybe afterwards asks if it's, if that was the right thing to do. <laughs> and yeah, that's not, that's not something that feels inspiring to me at all. Cause it, first of all it feels like a delay mechanism yeah and it kind of like makes me just think of this whole idea of manifestation too you and I have talked about manifestation a couple of times and every time I think about manifestation I'm just like eh, nope <laughs> staying away from that because I just want what spirit wants for me I can't sit here and think about you know oh this would be nice and that would be nice and wouldn't it be good to have this and <laughs> you know it's backwards to me I want to go to spirit first and find out what it is that I'm meant to be doing. What, what is it that I'm meant to have? Who is it that I'm meant to have? Who is it that I'm meant to, you know, share with and extend with or help or whatever. And, you know, so it's like over the years, it's been this process of figuring out the right steps almost to these things because Sometimes things will just come into my mind and there is a temptation to just go along with it and maybe throughout sort of little twinges of like, oh, I don't know, there's like, like there's doubt just ends up being there. And so it's been just this learning process of, you know, even when things enter in my mind to still go into prayer and really check in and see if that if that's really guidance, that's my ultimate goal. I just want to know if this is guidance and then I'm usually all about it, even if it brings up fear or doubts or whatever, that's all for the healing, right? So, so yeah, I think it's just, you know, a message that we have to be really clear about what comes first. The ego usually likes to speak first. So it's always just a, a call to go into prayer and see really what what is what is it that's given so that you know we can make sure that we're being integrity with everything that we're doing. Everything, you know, from getting up in the morning and maybe wanting to sleep in to, you know, these kind of bigger decisions, big picture decisions in our lives. Um, it's really all the same and it's all these opportunities to really learn what it what it feels like to be in the channel with the spirit, which is integrity. Yeah, uh, it's all about the alignment. It's 100% about the alignment. And, you know, we're allowed to make mistakes. We're not going to be punished. We're allowed to falter we're allowed to be confused you know the spirit is absolute grace you know but i was i was seeing right before we got on you know i'm not a big bible person at all in this life i feel like i have for many lifetimes before but um and i don't really know all the stories and terms uh that are kind of biblical stories, but the obvious ones of like Jesus being taken to the cross, you know, I was just having that show up right before here. And it's like, you know, Jesus was supposedly walking the lands, delivering miracles left and right. Water into wine, loaves and fishes, you know, and casting out demons and healing the sick and raising the dead. You know, he obviously had some big juju, you know, he obviously had <laughs> a lot of divine power flowing through him. And I was being just sort of shown that idea of like, 
he was sent to carry his cross to his final spot there. And if ever somebody could have gone out of integrity to kind of wipe everybody out, you know, let me show you who's the king, right? I mean, there's like a really glaring example I was given this morning. You know, he stayed in integrity. He stayed in the message of, I'm your source and you're here with me and let me do through you. And he took what was seemingly given to him on the world stage and he dealt with it within himself in that channel and received the grace. And on the other side of it, we know the story. He rose again, right? I mean, that, wow. You know, that's the kind of like ultimate integrity that we're called to. That That's pretty amazing, <laughs> you know, to sit and look at it. Did he use that power to harm? Did he use that power and potency to get himself out of a corner? No. He used it to stay in the channel with spirit. What an incredible demonstration, because this world is confusing. It will tell you, take up your sword and hurt somebody, cut their head off. Use your power of influence to get what you think you should have, a nicer house, a better wife, whatever, right? This world is very seductive, and its thinking is completely backwards. So we need these really, really powerful examples of what integrity is all about. And again, from what little I know about Jesus, it was all about, God, what would you have me do? I, I can't get enough of these stories. I need to hear it over and over again. I need to know in those moments where I feel like my back's up against the wall, and I'm here to tell you I've had a lot of those experiences where my back was up against the wall. And thank God I had been cultivating my relationship with spirit so that I heard, lay down your sword. Really? Yep. You sure? Yep. You promise? Yep. Day after day after day. In that kind of prayer, right? So it's really practical. If you're going for the healing and you're going for awakening, you have got to put your connection with source first. And then out of that, all the integrity that you need will be given to you and shown to you. What does it look like, practically speaking? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, you know, we, I think we've called it a tightrope walk many times now. And yeah, just remember this this whole journey is really... It's like walking on the razor's edge. It's really easy to go off either side. And, you know, not to make it sound like it's very dramatic most of the time, because to me, it doesn't feel like a very dramatic path most of the time. You know, there's been moments of that, but there's this, like, the wavering in the mind is so tempting still, you know, at certain times. And... You know, there's always a call to be gentle with ourselves when that happens. And yet, I think the more practice we get in it, the the swifter, the realigning with the spirit can happen. And the rewards are so immediate when we when we operate that way. And I think it's it's like to me, it's always so beautiful because I can, you know, I get to be proven wrong <laughs> over and over about things that, you know, I just couldn't imagine would be possible with the spirit. And then somehow things end up turning out better than I thought they could. And, you know, so it's a really amazing. Yeah, I mean, like the example, you know, of Jesus going towards the cross and then having so much faith in the message that he heard from the spirit that it wasn't, it wasn't the end. He's not a body. <laughs> There's going to be, you know, there is, there is life that isn't touched by death. And, you know, that's what he came to, to teach and, you know, to be in that position and to accept that that's the guidance for you. I mean, 
I'm not sure I could at this point, but it's <laughs> yeah, it's very, very inspiring, right? It's like super, super, super strong in the connection with spirit. And yeah, and it's so nice to, you know, more and more trust that whatever the plan is from spirit for my life, that the the more that I can fully trust him with this plan, the better everything will be and you know i i will have and do have what i need and that's what it is for everyone and like when things get turned upside down and we start to let fear lead the way it's just it's not fun <laughs> it's not a very rewarding path when you know we want to when we want to get in there and start to control things again it's so much more rewarding and joyful and relaxing to really let the spirit handle everything <laughs> and you know it doesn't have to look like spending days and weeks in meditation once there's a once there's you know a trust that's built up you can I I mean I can sit for a minute and be clear <laughs> on what it is that I'm meant to be doing most of the time. So, you know, for those that might be listening and feel like it's it's really difficult sometimes, just keep your keep your heart open and mm, be curious about how the spirit wants to show you. You know how to approach everything in your life and you know how he how he comes through to you is so specific to you <laughs> that it's important to not compare how it works for other people and really just trust these inner nudges and inner feelings that feel like they're coming from a quiet place yeah and everything everything will turn out great oh and i love this too i didn't know this was going to come up but there's a, I forget which movie it is, but there's such a, uh, I think it's a movie and there's one person in there that just keeps repeating. He's like a priest and he keeps repeating this one line over and over. And, you know, not not all the time, but just in situations where it really makes sense and it's really helpful. And he keeps saying, like, everything will be fine in the end. And if mm. it's not fine yet, it's not the end yet. <laughs> you know, so I just really like that. And yeah. If it's not fine right now, it's just not done yet. And there's a little something standing in the way that can be cleared out and can be discovered. So, yeah, it's my ending message, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's just wonderful, no matter what the topic is. Mm. It's just wonderful to make oneself available to the grace, whether you're doing a recording like we're doing, or whether you're on the seeming so-called receiving end of the message that seems to come through us. It's just a good choice just to use this as a demonstration for your choice to serve your mind and to serve the spirit. It's really, it's vital. Mm. It's juicy. And I'm really glad that we're all here together to enjoy it. Yeah, me too. We can't ever lose if we're in integrity, and spirit will never ask us to compromise. So, great topic. Glad we landed on that today, Elizabeth, and yep. grateful for anybody who's joining in. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>